to go live, I'm going to add the title. So I want you to talk a lot. <laughs> so you have a problem no talking. What? That's why I didn't even know how is this going to start? Because I don't like unprofessional radio interviews. I had some where they're like, All right, here we go. Can you hear Oop. me? Can you hear me? No, no, no. We're good. Okay, we're good. We're, we're on live now. So. Uh, <laughs> Hamilton Radio, Mr. Gene Piero. Doc G here. Yeah, that's right. Um, let me share it with all your places and then let me introduce you. Well, anyway, let me do this real quick. Um, I've got Anne Marie Priserna, one of my good friends, co writer, all around entertainer, a, a, amazing music artist to uh, my show. Welcome, Anne. You're, Hello. You're on. <laughs> Did you call me Anne? No. Anne Marie Pisano. Yes. Anne Marie. Uh, there's only one person I let call me Annie, and you know who that is, right? No, I don't know. I, I just it's it's me. Paul Mac. You can call me G. You can call me Doc G. You can call me G. I don't He's care. He's Australian, so I'll forgive him. <laughs> yeah, Mac. give him a shout call out. Give him a shout out. <laughs> yeah, but, well, well, shout out Hamilton Radio, Paul oh, Mac Super Indie you. Show, Gene Piero live here with me um you know you guys were some of the first people that played my music when i was just i think uh putting a couple demos out across facebook and you said hey we'll play your music and i'm like really absolutely i honestly didn't know how people back then years ago were getting their music on the on the radio you know yeah uh, it's it's still I crazy and it's it. still crazy um i just want to tell you too that um Oh, uh, this, I don't know if this is good. I should say this, but, uh, Facebook is going to be losing their messenger very soon. Oh, really? I'm going to try and see if you did a post real quick. I'm doing it right now. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you know, give me a minute. All this stuff. I have to edit the thing first. So I know people know well, you're here. From what I understand, Go uh, ahead. Facebook is allowing live. It just can't be in what I would call dj format so for all you artists that wanted to do a watch party you know play videos um i guess that's going away like i used to play other artists videos to help them so i had i could line up a couple different songs right and it seems like if those songs are registered in music stores and stuff it's like a playlist and because of um the royalties and how either radio stations and anybody playing music is supposed to play, uh, you know, pay royalties. Facebook is restricting that. However, that does not mean artists that are tuning in and right. listeners that you can't share somebody's video to your Facebook. You can. It's just the Facebook Live can't be streaming like DJ radio play of different songs after the other. And um, so, if somebody has a YouTube link. Uh, or they have their video uploaded on Facebook of their music, you can share it, but you can't do like a song rotation thing is what I, I mean, I couldn't even play my own song in a watch party a couple weeks ago where I was adding other artists. So it doesn't make any sense. That works out. And obviously if you pay some moolah through their advertising, I we guess, know. their big we know. label, you can play anything across. But, you know, and Facebook owns Instagram, so right. we'll see changes over there because Instagram has got what's called IGTV, which is Instagram TV. And uh, when you go into your Instagram and you click on the IGTV TV widget, right. you're allowed to upload full videos at the time. Um, it's crazy. And it will show only as, I want to say, 60 seconds on your timeline on Instagram. But then if you click see more, it takes you to the full video. Or you just go to the IGTV video icon and you can watch all these full videos. So Instagram's kind of where I'm looking a little bit. Um, and you were a Twitter Twitter person, too. Remember you told me Twitter way uh, back? To... You know, honestly, I'm kind of burned out on all of it. But we are right now <laughs> in the middle of, till I want to say, the 12th of October, the first ballot for the 63rd Grammys. I've got um, my song Money Pain. And, oh, I love that song. I just played, uh, and American just played Roots, it. And I got Thank You, my contemporary Another great song. gospel yep. song on the ballot, the first ballot, which is a huge honor because, you know, it does have to be a certain quality to, 
even be accepted. And what are they looking for? Tell me, what accepted. are they looking for? Do you, do you really the know? Voters, you have the members of the academy, the recording, N-A-R-A-S, NARAS, or the recording academy. The voters, when you go in online, and it's been going on since October 1st, I want to say last day of voting, October 12th, mm -hmm. um, they go in and all the entries are in there by category, American Roots, Pop, Rock, Best Song, Best Album, Best New Age, Best Instrumental, Best Classical, you know, all the way down. Uh, you, and and the, there's widgets that have your song because they've been uploaded um, and they click the vote tab. But what a lot of people don't know about the Grammy Awards is that many of the categories um once the voters have voted mm -hmm. then usually there's a top five which is called a nominee right and um but some of them have committees meaning once those votes come in then there are people that are with the grammys that are on a committee that decide the final five so you know here's how i feel about all that is i um you know, it's awesome. It's an honor to be a Grammy member. It's awesome to be on the ballot. Uh, for me, my goal the next year or so is to get to know more Grammy members, to collaborate with more Grammy members and get to, I wouldn't say higher levels of music, but just working with professionals that, you know, take the care and the time to do things right. And, mm -hmm. you know, the quality of their work is awesome. And I'm very proud of not only being a Grammy member, but knowing some of these artists that I've met personally now, I've gone out to events uh, the last two years. Some of them right. um, I met personally were nominees that I really loved their music. And some of them were Grammy winners. And uh, usually for the independent artists, the winners have a little better luck in children's music, jazz, new age. Um, trying to think, uh, you know, pop rock and all that, you know, the big labels, but I am seeing independent artists or artists that are just with smaller labels making huge waves. So Wonderful. congratulations to all my artist friends that are on the Grammy first ballot, because I'm proud to know you. I'm proud of you. And, you know, I know we're going to see some winners this year and I'll be like, I know that person. Yeah. You know, and hopefully one day, maybe I'll get a Grammy. You never know. Uh, so, I'm waiting for that million dollars, but I got money paid, <laughs> which is, you know, yeah. somehow I keep, <laughs> keep doing it. I keep trying, I keep chugging, you know, doing a lot of stuff myself. Um, I have great support from Bongo Boy Records, Monique Grimm, yeah. which, uh, you know, it's an independent label where you retain all the lights, rights to your music, but she does great promotion right and distribution and also has a tv show so the video that my producer and i bob mcgilpin uh put together during covid because we couldn't meet you know has been on bongo boy tv so i'm really grateful to Monique that's good bongo yeah records. yeah you know the gospel song i actually called it country because i really don't mention god in that song but thank you is really just it's the story of my life it's my when I'm crawling out of bed in the morning with all my aches and pains, and, you know, I had an accident a couple of years ago and broke several bones. And oh no. Yeah. Had several surgeries Yeah. and getting up and still having to go to work. Cause I'm single. I pay my bills and, um, you know, it's hard. And when I'm crawling out of bed, I'm thinking, okay, thank you for this bed I slept in. And I'm going into the kitchen and opening up the refrigerator and, there's cereal, no milk. There's toast, no butter. <laughs> you know, there's one egg. There's a lot of songs and there. I'm like, and Thank you for this egg. And I mean, I'm serious. That is how that song was written. Was just I was driving into work. My car was going on 13 years old. It was 11 years old no. at the time I wrote the song. And the dashboard lights were out, and the odometer wouldn't even work. And I would have to pound it to get the odometer to come back I know. I driving into work <laughs> and just hating going into this day job and go, thank you for this job thank you that my car is still running <laughs> you know please watch over my family and friends and every day that's what i say every morning in my head or even verbally as i'm driving and going to work so 
that is how that song was written. I mean, there is a lot of personal stuff in that song. And uh, trying to find the good in everything. That's all you can do. Well, you have to be grateful. Now, for me, I'm at that point. It's like, show me the money. <laughs> I, I think I'm a good person. You are. You're a sweetheart. Uh, you know, I love you. I don't understand why evil people have money or something. I call them evil, but you know, why do some people succeed? Why don't? And and as you get successful, you and what is success, that. right? What is success? That's right. When is it ever enough? But I do have big dreams and something that no matter how frustrated I get, I do try and implement. You have to imagine it. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Whether you're having a, just free thinking, having a glass of wine or whatever, you know, and free thinking and imagining yourself walking up on the stage and accepting a Grammy award or having a million dollars in the bank you have to see yourself in those places or else it is never going to happen so you know it's okay to fantasize okay, you're it's okay actually to making it happen what kind of dress you're going to wear and uh who you might give the bird to <laughs> you know but whatever it's like who you're going to say thanks to and you know you have to see it in your mind because if you can't dream it it's not ever going to you know become you so right you have but, to visualize you know, it yes of course you've got to keep learning you've got to uh keep trying to be better i never think my songs a year later i'll think those songs that i wrote that were number one on charts and stuff i can do better i can do better so and you do you yeah. do better and, and you always amaze me with the music that the, the yeah. quality the sound everything i know it's bob mcgilpin but you know primarily you had to start somewhere where you had that idea in your mind right to make that song what you what what it is today yep absolutely um i'm just checking your page here real quick i put it on your page by the way too well i don't i have to prove it so you tag me I'm going to try to tag you in it. Let's see if I can tag well, you. Don't mess with it. I will find it. I got it. So I will share it. Okay. You share it. I put it out on a couple pages. I'm going to put it on Hamilton radio. You and a couple of pages. Glasses, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, glasses. I don't know if you know it, but we did meet Bobby Valley, Frankie Valley's brother. And he's always looking to promote independent artists. And he's actually promoting my friend. Um, uh, her name is, uh, what's her name? I'm sorry. Her name is um, Sharon Marie, um, Sharon uh, Priscilla. Um, she's a sweetheart of a person and um, she's actually a good friend of ours. So she's going on the tour with him or doing things with him, playing, you know, all the carpenter music, all the music that you like, you know, some of your songs are based on people and stuff. It's kind of what she's doing and um i reached out to him a couple times i said i got a lot of great indie artists not only her but there's some indie and i had you, <laughs> so you said, know you know what and for me i'm gonna stop using the word indie so i just shared it to my timeline and i'll figure out the rest later yeah because that might be keeping you down right do you think but Maybe? um yeah, I mean, usually I'm sharing to five million. You're a music people. artist. You're it's a music really artist. What, what, what can't you be mainstream? And then your computer slows down, and Facebook doesn't like that you're doing something else, and you know. But anyway, um, you know, I'm starting to call myself an entertainer. Why? Because I'm not just a singer. I'm not just a songwriter. Right. I'm not just a comedian. I'm not just an actress. I'm an entertainer. And um, cool thing about this whole Grammy ballot thing at this time is, you know, people correspond and I can tell who really listens. They, you know, note certain things on the songs and what they like. And, you know, people are trading entries, listen to my work. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't find anything wrong with that because honestly, you know, how do you expect anybody to vote for you if they don't become familiar with your work? So, you, right. you know, I spend hours after my regular job trying to, listen to all the emails, all the songs. Well, if, if somebody's got like two albums up for consideration, that's like 20 songs right there. <laughs> Just think about it, you know, three to five minutes. It is, song. yeah, yeah. Um, I try and get familiar with all their work, follow their social media, put them across Twitter, Spotify, you know, try and uh, mm -hmm. support them. But it's, 
you know, it's not all about, okay, I'm going to vote for you. You're going to vote for me. It's in my philosophy is you need to get to know these people and their work and become part of the music community. I mean, we're all members, just like you've got listeners with Hamilton radio and people are familiar with your shows and hosts. It doesn't happen overnight. Oh, boom, you're number one. You know, you have to develop relationships. Yeah, you're right. So that's the philosophy I take. Um, you know, I see a lot of people I've been in nominated in other independent artist award shows. You know, I firmly think money has a lot to do with that. Some people buy their little award certificates on these online award mm -hmm. shows. I don't do too much of that. I really just want to be known for quality music when it comes to my music. I write all my songs. They're all my original work. Money Pain was written by not me, but Bob McGilpin. He's my mm -hmm. producer and he's the, the guy singing on the song with me as a duet. And um, that song's done great of course so bob wrote the best song probably <laughs> i'd say bonfire is another one of my favorites in fact i love all my songs simply because they all tell a different story from perspective of my sure. life yeah absolutely i mean i could i could write a book uh gene i mean the stories that i want to tell <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe I'll entrust the the book or something to somebody when I know I'm about ready to die because the well, some of these stories would probably ruin a lot of lives. <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's just I have run into colorful characters. <laughs> women in the Nashville. I, I what is its own story, right? Yeah. And some of these people that you know don't take what you see on Facebook. For granted i'm nobody i'm a i am a entertainer i have tons of talent i'll i'll say that um you know till you got half a million dollars and you're on billboard or you're here or there you know there are so many talented people that you'll never see on tv you'll see some of these people on your street corner you'll see some of them homeless totally agree that are probably the most brilliant musical geniuses you've ever you know, seen. That's right. So an award or, you know, being famous. I mean, sure. I just, I, I would love to wake up in the morning and not worry about money, you know, <laughs> or struggle so hard. Cause I really do struggle. I have a lot of health issues and things I don't talk about, you know, as a rule on Facebook. But when it comes to my music, those songs are pretty much documenting from rain to i don't know what love is to bonfire let's see we had closer which was about a long distance relationship trouble with kenny i love trouble trouble i mean i love i love that's all a your true songs. story that's a true story that song is i, I got in trouble that's how that song got written <laughs> I mean, I and, love uh, all your songs. I really that, do. Discount tobacco and beer. I used to take these. It's another great song. Another homeless great song. songwriter guys. Where do you want to go? You know, I would feed them. You know, I'd give them dinner. Here, sweetheart. You I'd let care. them shower. Some of them slept on my couch. Where do you want to go? With the, the handful of change they had, they wanted to go to the discount tobacco and beer store and buy a beer and split a pack of cigarettes. See, that's what I'm saying. You turn everything into so, a song. It's so terrible. I, I'm always wondering why people look down on that simply because, you know, if you had money, and I guess we'll just talk a lot about money tonight. Money. <laughs> but if you had money, you would go out to a nice restaurant and you'd have a glass of wine and you'd enjoy a and this and that, right? Right. But just because it's a homeless person wanting to split half a pint of beer with their buddy because they don't have enough money to buy two two bottles of beer right in a brown what, what's a in a brown oh bottle in a bag is what i used to got a bottle in a bag yeah. it, it was one of the lines in the song but that's how those tobacco places work and then splitting <laughs> a pack of the cheapest cigarettes ever but you know what they, they cared for each other i used to bring groceries to a homeless camp behind this cave. Yeah, how sweet is that? Here in oh, Nashville, so beautiful. There were like tents. There were about 20 people behind the woods of a major grocery store. You know, yeah. Kmart and uh, bring groceries. They had a little bonfire. You know, I don't know what they did in the winter. It had to be cold. 
Oh, know? yeah. Um, and they did take care of each other. And yet it seems like people that do have, they don't always, they're more about themselves. So uh, yeah. anyway, that was what that song was about. And let's see, what was after that? Discount Tobacco and Beer. Well, we put out one cover on the Dolly Parton tribute album, I Will Always Love You. And that did great. And now there's um, yeah, other artists really on the good. tribute album with me on Bongo Boy Records. And, and then we put out, this year, which is on the ballot, um, thank you, my song about gratitude and money pain, which is all about persevering, <laughs> you know, musicians. And you know what? It's so deep inside of us. Oh, I got something for you. This it's this might be inspiration saying. for another song. This might be inspiration for another song. We just came out of the dollar store, and I have a friend that used to work at a dollar store, and he used to call him the dollar store general because he only shopped at the dollar store for everything. And I was. Oh, I'm a Dollar Tree gal. That's well, that's one of my songs on my back burner. I'm a Dollar Tree gal. Uh, I'll make it like Hickey Country or, but uh, hey, why not? You know, <laughs> and and they got any any holiday you can find all sorts of decorative stuff. But as far oh, as I know. cleaning and all that stuff, why not? Why not shop at the Dollar Tree? Why are you going to pay five bucks for a thing of toothpaste when the same thing's a bucket? I don't understand it either. But because it's still called Dollar Tree, if you noticed, everything's getting smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just getting fatter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I need to go on the COVID diet. Uh, you know? How you been how you been doing with this COVID? I mean, it's it's probably hampered you a lot because I know you do entertaining and you do go out and you do, you know. Uh, you know, there's really no change for me because pretty much every penny. You know, I work a regular job. I help Monique over at Bongo Boy with just when she, you know, needs a little help with her workload and putting albums and stuff in order. And Oh, you're uh, good at that. That's good. I help that. a lot of artists. You know, I don't get paid for it. I chat with a lot of people that ask me a lot of questions and I try and take the time to answer their questions and give them resources and links and referrals, whatever. Yeah, but you got to charge for that. You got to charge for that. Very yeah, time consuming. Now, I really do believe that it comes back to you in karma. But you still got And I'll give a perfect example without being specific is uh, somebody asked me to promote, oh, but you're great. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, you're a Grammy member and you're asking me to promote. Well, I saw you on the red carpet at the events, blah, 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 at the soiree and here and there. I'm like, but I'm an artist. <laughs> and so people latch on to that because they either see what I'm doing across social media or right. see me promoting other people and artists. And I do that because one, I believe in their music. Two, I'm trying to just give them a boost. And maybe it's something personal. Maybe they were ready to give up. Maybe they were crying to me or maybe they couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. So I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna help you get this song somewhere or I'm going to send this to some of my radio friends. or And I give them a boost because that's what friends do, right? You know, that's what you do. Um, but I don't ask for money and I don't really want to be in that business because I want to focus on my music. So right. lately I've been feeling I've backed off a little bit off of all social media a little bit. One, because of the whole right. Grammy ballot thing. And that's just volumes of emails and music listening. So I can't be in chat rooms or listening to other stations. And you're trying to get familiar with people, mm -hmm. connect and, you know, all this stuff. Um but I, I want to get back to feeling creative because after a while, um, recently, like somebody's doing a big festival and, oh, well, you can be a videographer. It's like, well, I'm an artist. Don't you want me on your roster of artists performing at your festival? Sure. You know what I mean? Oh, well, you can be there. It's like, no. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm a great performer. I know how to put on great live shows. Um. So, you know, I guess my goals for this year is to do more live videos or do more live uh, performances, which mm -hmm. COVID is totally restricted. But pretty much even before that, uh, you know, I always was working really hard and then working on my music and doing my promotion and every penny going into music. So I don't go out as often as I should, but, you know, uh you know, why do I want to sit there and watch other musicians performing on stage unless they're my friends? And I've got, you know, favorites. So they're in Music City and stuff. Um, 
why would do I want to do that? You know, you, mm-hmm. you're always going to want to be up on stage. So I'm always working on my music, which tomorrow, by the way, I go in the studio and I got two songs we're going to be doing the vocals on. Oh, beautiful. So there's a Christmas song coming. I won't say the title yet. Yeah, I like that. Christmas song coming. And it's just a fun one. It's a country swing Christmas song. Probably a little like Brenda Lee. And Mm -hmm. um, it's an original that I wrote. I really want to do a music video to it. Uh, But once I get the actual music, then I'm going to try and see if Howie... uh, Nice. wants to maybe play Santa in it. And, oh, he would be um, great with that, yeah. Get, get some of my musician friends down at Music City Bar and Grill to um, be in the video. And, you know, I want to put that on TV by next year. I will. So I want to make a nice video. And I nice. know, saw some great dancers down there and I've already got their cards because I want to have people swing dancing. And, you know, That's it's nice. all budget. But you know what? I did it with Money Pain. I still put it on TV. So, hey, why not? <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. You are an amazing woman, I swear. Yeah. You you, so, you you find your way around to get the things done, and you are a great businesswoman because a lot of women can't do that. A lot of guys can't do that. Well, you know what's funny about money pain, even in some reviews or comments, is people, oh, you got such great chemistry, and I'm thinking, well, you could have chemistry musically. You know, when you listen to a recording, okay, right. you guys play off each other. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But they were talking about the video and I'm like, we were never in the same room in the video. If you actually watch Money Pain and go to my YouTube channel, um, we never were in the same room. We couldn't because of the whole virus thing that we were supposed to, you know, go into video production and have a full band and all that. And so we had to change gears. But uh, no, I've got a great idea for the Christmas song and it's going to be rocking. And then there's the other song I'm really excited about. I wouldn't even know what genre to categorize it in. It's probably a world change kind of song. Oh, nice. Um, it might be a little bit like Adele combination. It's good. You know, we might keep it in the American roots pocket, but it's going to have a little bit of pop, probably a little more pop mm-hmm. than my country blues kind of pocket that i've been putting songs out in lately and um you know i if you liked thank you if you liked uh what's the other i i think this one has much more significance um of what i wrote the lyrics about and bob is so great to work with because i'll tell him what sounds i want because i'm never going to sound like adele i'm never going to sound like bonnie raid or rita franklin you got your own style you got your own energy but i will give him examples of sounds when we talk about just like the tones of is it the tone of this keys or this electric guitar with this kind of high pure bell tone is it a hammond sound is it a bell tone you know and we talk about sounds and it's really interesting working with him to say, I want this here and I want that there. And here's an example of Adele and hear those chimes and, you know, but I'm never going to write trying to sound like any artist. I'm me, I'm my genre, mm-hmm. you know, and every time I need to put a song in stores, I never know. Is it pop? Is it rock? Is it country? It's like, it's me, you know, right. it's really tough because genres are labels and i'm making my own music if you think like when meatloaf put out his rock opera when um queen put out bohemian rhapsody was i mean come on bohemian rhapsody (laughs) phenomenal song what was that was that rock no you know there's opera in that song too right i know what you mean yeah you know so that's what i love to do i i i start one way and then i add some other sounds and i usually rock out the ending but so this second song I'm excited about because it's not only vocally challenging, but it's going in some directions with the music that probably people haven't heard yet. Or it might be going back to those bad girl roots. But uh, mm-hmm. that bad girl album was a different producer. So Bob, um, you know, what Bob comes up with, we'll see tomorrow when I go in, I'll going to lay the basic tracks and it really sucks. Um, oh, it's over there on the wall over there, but to show you, but um, we're going to have to wear masks 
you know, Bob's a little older. Sorry, Bob. But he's a little older. I know. And he's going to practice social distancing. So I can't hug him or sit right next to him and talk about the board and the channels. But I'll have to go in there. And then once I go in the booth, it's okay. I'll be able to sing. <laughs> and, you know, we'll still communicate. It's just not going to be the same same way. And um, I got these uh, masks that got the Money Pain CD cover across it that I got from uh, this. So I'm going to give him his mask. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, so it'll be a little different, but um, I'm looking forward to it. And there's actually three other songs. There's one that's kind of like a um, blues, bring it on home type song. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about bringing in somebody on it as a duet. I've got a couple names in mind and it just depends on who wants to do it. But I learned my lesson is we're going to lay the basic tracks on that first and the vocals so somebody can hear somewhat of a pro recording of it. Right. So they can make up their mind if they want to sing on it. Um, but there's a duet blues tune. And what's the other one? Um, no, there's another one, deep and heavy one that I wrote, which will probably be my final song on what I call the album Songs from Nashville. Mm hmm and that show well basically once the album is complete then my bucket list is to make it a live show with the script and actors and costumes and oh nice very very cool before Let i me... die so i'm and... hoping at least to get the album out and the script written which i will then send to a friend or somebody power of attorney whoever <laughs> that, um if i die before it ever becomes a broadway show you know, that they'll follow through on my dream to take my original songs that I've been putting out, you know, right, right. Nine, 10 years in Nashville, which will be the album songs mm -hmm. from Nashville story of my life and my journey. And then some, and it will have the story, the script, the characters, costumes, dancing, choreography. Of course, I see the large video effects and stuff too. I mean, we're talking Broadway. And, you know, I'm getting to know some people that are already producing shows on Broadway. But once again, I want to have the whole album will be complete. So they have the music and then I'm going to have to give them the proposal and the script and all that. So that's on the high bucket list. But I think it's going to happen as long as I'm still here on this earth. So <laughs> the final song is actually the probably the last song. Because it's going to show, and mm -hmm. it could be my fantasy, because I might get to Broadway and get it on Broadway before I die, you know. But um, <laughs> it's about my journey as an artist with getting my music out there and the people that I met. And all my songs have a hidden story in them, which, which will come out eventually, like I said. If I wrote my Telltale book, I mean, it's <laughs> just... And it, it, it's a little more sane now. I would say I'm in a better place. But when I first moved to Nashville, there were some artists that really took advantage. But, you know, in a way, I, they don't fool me. I don't care if they live in big fancy houses now or they, you know, one guy went through right. 30 women and now lives in a fancy house with some lady who's got lots of money. He'll drain her pocketbook, too. It's just going to take him a little longer. He'll make her insane. Yeah. and Because, you know... I, I do think people change. I do think people, some people find God or become spiritual or whatever, but not really. Not if you beat up people and stuff. I don't think, the, the reason why I don't think he's changed is I never got an apology. Oh, right, right, so right. So if you really have God in your life, if you really, I think you would reach out to those people that you know you hurt and let them know you were saying, you never did. So um i've written songs about that though i haven't put those on the radio um but you know i had some dark things happen you know people that stole people that did drugs people that uh physically abused me emotionally abused me oh, it's wow. all part of my journey because when i the only way that i can forgive them is when i look at okay i met this person and who did i meet through them or 
you know, what circumstances happened where then I went and I met this person who introduced and to see how my six degrees of separation brought me to where I am now, even though that person's in my past, right, that person right. was bad, they may mm-hmm. hurt me. So I try and put a positive spin on it and go, okay, you know, the six degrees of separation through my connection with that person. Maybe I stayed with that person a little too long, but, um, you know, God is leading me somewhere, you know, and yeah. some days it's hard to have faith. I'm sure, you know, it's hard to. It's tough. It's, 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 I mean, entertaining is definitely tough. I mean, I, I know you went from comedian to uh, music entertainer. I don't know even how that happened. Can you tell me how that happened? Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Or why it happened. You are, <laughs> If you're a entertainer, um, you do different things. So, you know, in college, long story short, we'll try and do it in 60 seconds or less, uh, was musical theater major in college. So you're singing, you're dancing, you're acting, you're taking tap dances, you're taking ballet, you're learning voice and diction, you're learning dialects, Cockney and British and Italian and you're learning to sing you have individual voice lessons you're learning classical you're learning broadway right you're learning opera you're learning music theory uh you're taking piano you're learning directing you're learning script analysis uh you're learning character analysis like you're going to do a part in a theater show you are um analyzing that character how do they drink how do they smoke do they smoke how do they walk how do they blink their eyes do they believe in this um you know how do they sit um all these very specific things and just think about some of the greatest actors in time al pacino robin williams how detailed they were in their characters they thought about all these things how does anthony hopkins how did he come up with that little finger thing that he did on the with this pinky as a serial killer in Silence of the Lambs. Right, 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 yeah. Those are the things that I was learning, right? So I did big theater shows, 2,000 seat theaters. When I graduated college, my first professional job was at a professional dinner theater in Colorado. And um, it was a show. And then you had the little oleos with the spotlight comedians and little like um, jokes kind of vaudeville style Mm -hmm. you know in between the acts and then i got hired at disney world which was huge uh you know three thousand people they auditioned and they chose 30 and they chose me with my little 60 minute monologue i prepared and kind of migrated to hotels i did music shows and all the orlando and i migrated down to bush gardens and did more comedy And then I did more bands and then I did more dinner theater and then, oh, you can do a commercial. You can be, and and then I started doing film and small little parts in television. And, you know, it's what we call gigging or whatever is uh, inspiring your creativity at the time. But I never lost music. I always was doing a band and I got a little burned out on the bars or the cover tunes because I did every band under the sun. I did a Motown band. I did dance. I did top 40. I did uh, a jazz band with stand up bass, all that. Um, I did some big band. Uh, so basically coming to Nashville 2012, I was kind of like, I just felt like I wasn't being creative enough and um because doing a cover band and it's all about the bar sales and you're singing covers just like our nashville musicians on broadway you need to know the nashville 100 and right looking at who but after a while if they don't want to learn new tunes if your band wants to keep playing the same songs over and over again i was just getting bored so um i said i wanted to go somewhere creative so i said "Mm, it's going to either be nashville new york LA, Vegas, or California. So I chose Nashville and started off in little going to some songwriter places. That's where I met some of my first music friends and um, started writing my tunes, meeting people like you and Paul of Hamilton Radio and a lot of other radio stations that played my music. 
and then finding out, oh, wow, I can get on FM radio. Oh, wow, I can become a Grammy yeah. member. Oh, Everything's you know, another adventure. Every time it was like, can I really do that? When I looked at the Grammy application three years ago, I was just overwhelming all the stuff you needed. And I just, that was right around the time of Bonfire. And I just decided, okay, well, what am I missing? What are the things I need to become a Grammy member? You know, touring or this or that. And I just started making the list of what I did have, what I needed to work on. And a year later, I became a member. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I couldn't imagine this a year ago. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm in a good place. But now it's even, it's even a little more because now I'm up there with, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's an honor to even know that voters are listening to my music, right? So are they going to vote me over maybe their record label and what projects I have with their team and production crew or, you know, am I going to get enough votes to be in the top five? I don't, probably not, but I'm <laughs> going to have met a couple hundred more people this year and a hundred more people than I knew last year and so on and so on. So, um, a great group, if you're not, and I know you're busy, but Indie Collaborative is a great group. Um, you're, you're talking about Facebook? Boy, Facebook? Yeah, Facebook? It's group? on Facebook, the Indie Collaborative. I'll look for it. We have it. a website, indiecollaborative.com, where you can register a profile and it's a directory, and it's filled with independent artists, musicians, anybody doing any sort of artistic work, not just music. Uh, it can have CMA Grammy members. It's run by Grant Malloy Smith, Eileen Sherman. They do a great job bringing people together, and they also do showcases throughout the United States. So in, I want to, was it January or February this year when I went out to the Grammy events, I actually performed Thank You on a grand piano at one of their showcases, and that was huge for me. And, you know, I hadn't touched a grand piano in, like, <laughs> years. I got a Yamaha full full scale piano here that has weighted keys. But if you've ever touched a grand piano, it's like you've got to really push down on the keys. And I didn't have any rehearsal on it. And I mean, the, the performance went great, but inside I'm like, oh, wow. It came from like a country, it went from a country gospel song, thank you did, to a Christian gospel, because it slowed down just a hair, because I'm like, pushing down, <laughs> push down those keys. So the tempo changed just slightly a little slower. Right. So I had to sing longer and breathe. But I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm making into this a gospel song now. Um, but it went really well. And meeting all those people, um, they're just stellar, their work. I mean, I was watching some people that ended up either being nominated or won Grammy Awards. I mean, you know, it's amazing. And you see them and you know them and now you're talking with them and it's like, you know, they work hard. But mm -hmm. um, the biggest step I think for anybody as an indie is getting funding. You either have to get grants or corporate sponsorship to really get right. seen and heard. So it's an honor to be, you at least have somebody that listened to your music that is, that even voted for you. You know, so maybe I only get 5% of the votes, right? You know, um, and Taylor Swift will get a nomination, you know. Uh, but I'm not in pop this year. I'm in American Roots, which um, last year on the airplane ride home, I sat next to this guy. He had his shoes off and his socks up on the wall. I was in the front row of the airplane. His feet were up on the wall. And I'm like, hmm, I had to sit in the middle. So he was like, hmm, somebody had to sit in the middle seat. Eh. And he had a mask on and I was, this is before COVID because this is January, February became real prevalent. So he had a mask on and somehow we were chatting. He said he was just being careful because he was an entertainer and he just came back from the Grammys. And I was like, oh, I just came back from the Grammys. And I was sitting next to Delbert McClinton. <laughs> oh, Delbert. Yeah. Fly, flying Burrito <laughs> Brothers. I didn't even know it until halfway through all the chit chat he said who he was i'm like oh yeah i was there i watched you go up on stage and accept your award um you know you never know right he's never been around he's... forever and you know people like kalani Peya in hawaii they are independent and work so hard and kalani does a lot of 
uh, touring. So he's got a huge fan base and he's so effervescent. And I've met him. I've hugged him. I've, you know, been to the luncheons and showcases. I got videos with him and pictures <laughs> and I saw him at the Grammy museum. And I'm like, I know that he won the Grammy and, uh, you know, indie artists like Frank and Dean, I'm hearing through the grapevine, they're working on a secret project, but um, it might have something to do with Pixar. So I met those two, two years ago and, you know, COVID probably slowed a lot down, but um, my whole point is you never know. So you got to just keep going on. You just got to keep going. trying to meet good people, make good connections. Right, right. And also when people get to higher levels and they don't include you, even though my feelings get hurt, <laughs> it's like, or we go to higher levels. I try not to forget anybody that helped me. And really everybody's going to be in my circle unless they screwed me over, unless they. Some people do forget you know, but I, I mean, you know, they're all part of the journey. Yeah, Marie, most people do forget you, but it's not, it's not, I'm not saying you personally, I'm just saying everybody forgets certain things. But, I, you know, I've seen this happen in the past, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I get like you. I'm like, yeah, okay, you forgot me. Why? Why would you forget me? I don't know. We get busy. We get wrapped up in the project that we're in. Yeah. You know, I know I talk about the Grammys a lot, but that's what's going on right now. And it's big, and you only got a certain time window up to October 12th to meet as many people, correspond, and get as many people to hear your music that are voting that might get you a nomination. Well, do you, so, you know, you spend a lot of time doing that. So you, you do know, know that email's going away, right? Out of your feed on Facebook and, you know, you, hey, Marie, know. Hmm? you do know that email is going away, right? Emails going away. So what are we going to do through Osmo? How are we going to communicate? No, but let, understand this social networking had chat messages and stuff like that so people weren't using the emails that's what i was told emails have become nothing but spam the servers uh don't want to do it anymore because it costs them money to have at least when they had emails they can use you know our friend our friend eric zuli i well, told they're gonna have to have some form of well no no listen no no no, no listen no 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 listen what i'm saying is probably charge domains domains if you have if you're a professional and you have a domain, you want an email for your domain, it's not available anymore. That's the biggest thing. So if you try to be professional and you have a Gmail and you have a Yahoo and you, it's just, that's going to have to be the way because you're yeah. not going to be able to have your own email anymore. Well, you pretty much need a domain email. Um, if you're a business and you want to do a lot of these PR blogs and be able to publicity. Do it. Um, you can't have a Gmail, but it, it will be forever. I mean, just going to the doctor, they're like, oh, you need to go online before you check in. It's like, what if I don't have internet? What if I'm 80 years old? And yeah, I don't yeah have you're right. Yeah. Computer. What happened to the check in the form and everything's automated? Pretty much. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, um, you know, I. I do go out and support Howie and his shows and some of the musicians in Nashville, but for the most part, I work, I keep counting my pennies and I keep doing my music and doing my studio stuff. And I just stay, keep my nose to the grindstone because I'm living on a shoestring budget. I I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm up there with people that have major labels, have a manager, they have a tour manager. I don't have any. I do it all myself. I know. <laughs> so kudos to me, you know. Kudos to you as hell exactly yeah. And, look how uh, good you look. Look at how pretty. You got beautiful blonde hair. You look amazing, by the oh, way. You look thanks. beautiful. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't. I can't see what you see because you're looking in a mirror. I'm looking at you as yourself. You're, you, you're a successful songwriter, music writer. You wrote for other people too. Let's talk about that. You wrote another song for another person, right? Mm. And many, many other songs. No, um, all the songs I've put out to the radio, I've written myself. I haven't done any co-writes. I've been asked, but I hate to say it, but a lot of times people will send you a song that's just not in any singing format in meter. 
and it's really hard now and you just reminded me that sandy sent something <laughs> but i really want to get that other song that's already written recorded for you when you guys are ready oh yeah yeah absolutely look with it um but um there's just i've got like 10 songs on my list that are mine that i still want to get done and i just i sent my producer five while i'm going hmm how am i going to pay him for all this <laughs> <laughs> but um Oh, and I'd said that earlier. So when somebody called me and asked me to do promotion, um, so I did what they wanted me to do. It was like, how much do you charge? I'm like, I'm not going to charge you anything. I do it because I like you because, you know, I'll, I, you're trying to do something. I'll help you. If you think I can help you, they, there you go. But um, I needed something in return. I needed some promotion and, um, you know, and I got something in return. So I do a lot of bartering. Why don't you do voiceovers? Voiceovers are, you know, you really yeah, don't have to do it. Yeah. I've got a microphone here. Yeah, I know, but I'm yeah. saying you should actually do voiceovers because you got a unique voice. You got a nice accent. I've done that. You've gotten some of mine, right? This yeah. is Mary Sue Llewellyn and my husband Bubba and my brother <laughs> Bubba from another mother. And, you know, I, I, I do, uh, I make up the, I just do it to change it up. But uh, I put on Facebook, who wants a radio liner? And I had about 50 people. I did. And then I sat there all day. It took me all day then because I thought I'd get a couple. You know, it's like I had a huge response. And then I sat there recording radio liners all day. And I need to do some more of those. It will. I think, um, you know, it's been a strange year. And I'm persevering just like everybody else is persevering. Right. Absolutely. And... Um, I do have new music coming out. If anybody wants to check out my existing music, best place to find all my media, just go to annemariepiserno.com, A-N-N-E-M-A-R-I-E, Annemarie Piserno, P-I-C-E-R-N-O, annemariepiserno.com. Right there at the top of my website, you'll see the little icon for just about everything, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, uh, you know, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, you know, you'll, you can click through LinkedIn, you can join anywhere that you like to hang out across social media, connect, um, my music, you can stream directly on my website, or you can purchase it. And uh, we got a lot of new music coming out this year. I'm trying to grind out the production because a lot of these award shows are stepping up their entries. First, it used to be March, April, then they moved it to February. Now it's Jan. It's like, you're like, really? I'm still paying off my credit card you know, know. from my last I trip. I know. But yeah. um, I, So I sent my producer five songs. Boom. He's like, how fast do you need them? I'm like, ASAP. I don't know. But uh, we're going to bang out two of them tomorrow, and I'm excited about it. So I should have an, I don't know what the date is, but um, before November, my Christmas song will be out, and I'll be sending it to Hamilton Radio and anybody Definitely. that wants to play it. Fun cool. song. Definitely be playing it. And it will become a new Anne-Marie Paserno classic Christmas song. So. Beautiful. I can't wait. That's yeah. awesome. So, yeah, I got a lot of stuff coming ahead yet, so... You ain't going nowhere, kid. I mean, uh, I'm trying. You're, you're... I'm just slowing down a little bit, and you know, we'll have I'm to. old. We'll have to. I'm old is a great excuse. Oh, did you forget this? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm getting old. Ah, <laughs> uh, did you gain weight? You know, I'm getting old. I enjoy uh, tonight. Eat the Denali <laughs> chocolate fudge ice cream that tastes so good. Ah, uh, you owe it to yourself. You know, old. you're not supposed <laughs> yeah. to deprive yourself. You never. Well, you know, I had some young somebody trying to, you well, know, showing some interest, and I'm like, "You're 20 years younger than me. Do you know how <laughs> old I am? I like older women." And I'm thinking, "What? For me, it's like, okay, so you know, that might be flattering, but I'm beyond that. Just go out, have a good time. Next, kind of." <laughs> thing not like i i need to be relationship because i'm stuck in my ways why because i'm old i think i just need to write that song uh i'm old i don't know who'd want to live with me i'm old stuck in my ways right I'm single I'm 
I can drink out of the milk jug. Another song, another song. If Every somebody country. says they're going to come over, I'm like, oh no, I got to run around cleaning my house or something. Like, no, <laughs> let's let's meet somewhere else. But um, it, you just get you get to a point where you get in your rhythm, and you know, really, I'm I'm just doing what I love to do now, even though it can be painful, it can be hard sometimes, or sometimes I lose faith and. But um, I'm trying to go back to just having fun with my music. And um, I've got my own little formula of how I'm going to get my music out there. And now I know how to do music videos. And now I know how to get it on TV. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and um, see what other opportunities, you know, come up. That's all you can do. Nobody else can ask for any more. And you've been, you accomplished almost everything you yeah. wanted to do in life. You know, well, once the CD re- is finished, um, then we'll do a CD release and I'm uh, going to do a live show. I've got a, I got a guy that plays excellent piano that I know from well over 30 years ago. You know, I have friends that go back all the way to high school. That's the amazing thing. I just, you know, you, you can have friends that you don't talk to every day and you'll still be just as close. And then you do have people that travel through and you never see again and you can't remember their names. And, um, you know, sometimes that gets me down in life a little bit like, wow, why couldn't that person stay around? And two years ago, a very dear friend of mine of 15 years committed suicide. It's still, there's some days I wake up, I still yeah. cry. Yeah, it's very sad, yeah. Um. And I think I'm the one that's sad. I think he's fine. I think he's up in heaven going, you know, I hated this world. I hated the hate. I hated nasty people. I hated the politics. I, he oh, just please. Yeah, don't he even... didn't want to stick around. You know, uh, I loved him dearly. He was a great friend. And um, he was in Florida. So when I moved to Nashville, we corresponded. And he gave me a lot of support with my music. And I found out across Facebook that he had passed and it just broke my heart. Um, I don't yet have the words to write about that, but there is a song that I would like to write about it. It just, when it does happen, it would, it would be a little emotional. So anyway, we probably should wrap up. because Yeah, I think we're wrapping up. up. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> wrapping up. So you gave all your info and we're good. I, I just want to thank you for this time. Um, I know that, um, you're busy doing other things and you got stuff going on, but it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Always time to um, sit back and uh, you know, see what you got going on. Uh, oh, your buddy, Ron Hemphill just said, hi. And uh, we have a lot of people in the chat room looking at us and I got a phone call. So let me go. I'll That's talk to you great. later. Then I got a cat saying, feed me. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Take care, my yeah. dear. And let everybody know where to submit their music, Gene. For you, oh, for your station, because you're one I, of the best. I'm going to tell them GDPENT1 at yahoo.com. GDPENT1 one at yahoo.com. 1 at yahoo.com. yahoo.com. Send yep. it to Gene Piero, or it's really D Piero, but seconds. Gene Piero on Facebook. Yep. Thank and, you. Uh, everybody, thanks right. for tuning in. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. Bye bye.